What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. you guys a little bit about mental health if you can hear my neighbors chopping down the tree I'm very sorry but it is spring and these flowers are just doing wonders and I couldn't help but want them as my background today because they are literally so beautiful today's mental health topic is five ways to stop taking things personally and how to gain your self-esteem back so that is a big title, but I am coming to you guys with quite some of my most near and dear knowledge that I have that I hold with me in my heart. And Jago. Um, so this knowledge that I have learned is truly one of the most special videos I will be giving you guys today because this is something I have truly struggled with for so long and it has taken me the longest to figure out and apply it to my life. And if this video saves a person a month from going through more personal pain, then it is worth me making this video for you. And also for me because it's also very therapeutic to remind myself of these things that I've learned and to share them with others and to be an example of what I preach. <laughs> so it's all around a great time sharing this knowledge with you. So first and foremost, I want to give you guys a little bit of back history as to how I figured out that I took things way too personally and how I knew my self-esteem was shot and the ways, the five ways that got me back to being the human I know I am meant to be. Far long ago, Marissa was once a child. And if you don't already know this about me, then I will, I'm gonna re-say it now. I grew up with a stepfather that was just not the kindest human. Um, if you go to my childhood trauma videos, then majority of the stories take place with him. And, you know, this person would say things, rip me to shreds whenever he would feel like it, to say the least. Um, if he was just in a bad mood, it meant that he was taking it out on whoever was near him. And majority of the time, I was home. So I got an earful of how terrible of a person I am, how I'll never amount to anything in my life, how ugly I am, how selfish I am, how terrible I am, and just all these terrible things that no child should hear about themselves. And, you know, this was a stepfather of mine, a person that my mom chose to love and bring into our home. So anything he had to say, I would almost agree with because in a sense, he was a person that was a parent figure and authority figure. And I, as a child, would never possibly understand that what he was saying I shouldn't be taking personally, but I didn't know anything that I know now, and I was just a kid. So of course, I took everything to heart, and of course, it like really messed with my brain, and it really started shooting down my self-esteem. This started happening as early as the age of 10, and it went on until I was about... 15. So it was a good five years of just a person knocking me down every opportunity he had when he wasn't in the best of moods. And of course, subconsciously, I attracted that into my life, in my adult life, with friends and people that came into my life. And they started treating me and telling me the same things that he did. So I automatically took it as an agreement. It was like, I guess this is me. I guess I am a terrible, selfish person. I guess I 
am never going to succeed in this lifetime. I guess I'm just always going to amount to nothing. And they were my true agreements. I walked around with those labels that I allowed to label myself. And I truly felt like that was who I was as a person. And that was where my self-esteem was at. So you could only imagine the types of situations and people and just all around things I would get myself into believing that this was the kind of person I am. Because if you know about energy, negative attracts negative. Positive can barely even get negative out of negative. And the only thing that can get negative to positive is another positive being. So I was only attracting negative, which kept me in a very negative place. And it took me about three rock bottoms. It took me three rock bottoms to sit here right now and tell you guys how I just don't take things personally anymore and how I took those labels off of me. I don't sit here and I don't plan out my videos. I like literally just talk from my heart. And then once I'm done filming, pray that it makes sense a bit. And it normally does, but I just don't want my videos to ever be too serious or like so informational and factual that I look like a robot. I try to make it like I'm a real person because I am. I'm going through these things as we speak. So I like to keep it. I like to keep it laid back. <laughs> so the first way of how to stop taking things personally and how to gain your self-esteem back. So this first lesson or this first way I'm going to talk about probably has taken me the longest to learn and to understand because it just didn't seem rational to me at first and didn't make sense to me at first. But after reading probably 15 books that said the same thing, I started to realize obviously there was a similarity that I wasn't catching on to. So I really embraced it and learned this. So basically, if you have never seen the color red, you will not know what the color is. When you see it, you won't know what to call it. You, don't, you won't know what to do with it. It will just be completely foreign to you. You don't know what it is until someone comes up to you and says, hey, this is the color red. It makes up this color and this color. It's made from this color and this color, blah, 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 blah. And then you know, oh, this color is red. But you don't know what your consciousness doesn't know or what you haven't been taught. So when someone comes at you, let's use an example of what my stepfather used to say to me. He used to say to me, you will amount to nothing in this life and you will do nothing with your life. Okay. What you need to realize is that this person, obviously from the start, as a little child or someone that might not know uh, too much about this subject, is people learn from example, people are taught things from a certain age, and obviously this person was either taught that or he has come up with this opinion of himself and has that agreement inside of his own head. So if the person can see that in you and can say those things about you, it means it's because it's in them too and they see it in themselves. And to distract themselves from seeing it within themselves, they point the finger at other people to like almost make it be like it's okay that they're like that because other people are like that too. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but basically if he didn't think that way of himself or if someone else never told that to him, he wouldn't know to say that and he wouldn't know how to say that. But since he already has that agreement made up in his own head, he will word vomit on you or on me and that's what happens. And then there goes Marissa in this now adult lifetime that has that agreement that if I'm in a bad mood or if I'm upset, I'll say it to another person and it's literally this domino effect of just false agreements that people have made or things that they really don't like about themselves that they want to distract themselves with by saying it to other people and distracting other people and making them go inward rather than going outward and be like, wait a second, no, you're like that and you just want me to feel bad with you, which I don't. And of course he's going to like, the most cowardish thing is for someone to talk badly to a child because a child isn't going to be able to defend themselves or say anything. They literally just take it and they agree with it and they go the rest of their life having these false agreements and then word vomit it out on maybe their child or someone younger than them. And it's just really messed up 
all around. I literally think one of the biggest cowards in the world are people that talk badly to children and make children feel bad about themselves because like how dare you like how dare you do that to like such a fragile mind. But yeah, you just need to realize that if people don't know things or if they don't have the, their own agreement within themselves and recognize that characteristic in themselves, then they're not going to put it on you. But if they're putting it on you, then they already believe that about themselves and they already like feel shame of a sense of themselves. So you automatically have to question yourself like, am I really this kind of person or are they just literally trying to tear me down? And that is where you get to put up your guard and be like, uh, okay have fun with your own word vomiting, I'm gonna walk away, rinse this off of me, and move on with my life. And it does get harder with age, especially if you're in a relationship with someone that does that, because then love is attached to it. And you really do start to believe what either friends or loved ones will say about you. And you just really have to recognize that no matter what anyone has to say, it says more about them than it does to you. And I know how cheesy that sounds, but I promise once you truly, fully understand that concept and take it into your heart and protect yourself with it, you view conversations and arguments completely differently that I literally wish everyone had the privilege of having this knowledge slash tool to put in their tool belt because you will be able to breathe so much brighter rather than having an altercation with someone and really sitting there with those agreements and suffering from them for quite some time. So just know that no matter what anyone says to you, they're already guilty of that inside of them and they don't like that about themselves already and they just want to make you feel bad. The second way which I kind of just said it in the first way, but I really want to highlight it now. But misery loves company. At the end of the day, misery loves company. If someone is miserable, they do not want to see people around them smiling and having a good time because they don't know how to themselves. So people are literally going to bring you down to their level if you allow them to. And you have to really look at the person and look at where they're in their life and be like, okay, where is this truly coming from with them? Because I can guarantee you someone that is happy and successful isn't going to really have that bad of things to say about anyone, nor ridicule an innocent person, per se. So you just really have to look at the person and question, is their life a life that you want to have? Is their opinion really that important? Are they that big of a deal in your life? And really, really recognize that majority of the time people that have something ill to say are people that are not in the best of place in their life. And you just have to recognize that like when people are in pain, like emotional pain is just as bad feeling as physical pain. And I think we forget that. And with emotional pain, it's not like you walk in a room and see that a person's leg is cut open. You don't see it. You just see a vessel, you see a body, you don't you don't know what they're going through on the inside. So really look at them and question where they're at in their life. And you'll be shocked as to see that these people majority of the time are suffering in something way different than you and are just in their own little category of their world. And they probably won't remember the thing you know things they said to you they just they they're they're that unhappy and they're that unpleasant with themselves that they just they want everyone else around them to feel that way so just always always remember misery loves company and you can either fuel that misery by joining them or you could be like you know what this is on you peace out goodbye number three Not taking things personally can be in every aspect of your life. It could be your work environment, it could be your personal family matters, it could be your boyfriends and girlfriends, it could be your friends, it could be acquaintances, it could just, it could be complete strangers that snarl at you while you're passing by them at Starbucks or something. It, it goes for every type of encounter you have in this lifetime. You have to also have a clear understanding that some people in this lifetime 
truly do not water their own garden. They don't have a hobby. They don't work out. They don't eat healthy. They don't have goals. They don't have desires. They don't have big dreams that they're looking forward to. They don't have relationships that are healthy. They just all around are a suffering type of person. What happens with these type of people is they don't have outlets. They don't have outlets of where they take out their aggression. They don't have outlets as to where they free themselves. They don't have outlets as to where they clear their mind. I call these people asleep. They're just asleep and they're just going on through this thing called life and they're on this autopilot, egotistic mind. And what happens when people don't have outlets, especially with anger and aggression, is they fume it out onto everyone around them or more so people because that is the only kind of interaction they have. And that's why sometimes if you've ever worked at a department store or any place where you have to deal with human interaction, you just have those customers where you're like, whoa, what the hell? And you realize that like, damn, they just are like some miserable human that like doesn't do anything for their soul or themselves. And you just have to recognize that some people literally do not have an outlet to diffuse their poison on besides other people. And those to me are some of the most terrible humans to surround yourself with because nothing you do or say will ever be good enough for them. They will always be able to find negative in any situation. And just always remember if someone doesn't have an outlet, chances are they use humans as their outlets. And if you are a human outlet to anyone in your life, just remember like it's their only way to get this stuff out of them. And unfortunately, they use the word you when they're doing it so that they don't have to say I when really that's what they are saying is I. I am a jerk. I am this. Blah, 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 blah. But instead they say you because they don't even know how to look in the mirror. They don't, they don't know how to do anything besides feel petty and feel sorry for themselves. So just always, always remember if someone does not have an outlet, chances are they use humans as outlets. And if you cross by them or cross tracks with them, you might accidentally come into that type of encounter. And just remember, they have to go home with themselves and live with that. You get to go and be free and do what you gotta do and just wipe that stuff away from you. With that being said, that brings us to four which is my absolute, absolute favorite. And I learned this about two and a half years ago. So I had this one life coach that would take me through uh, hypnotherapy. We do hypnotherapy sessions and there was one hypnotherapy session where um, she really took me deep. And I mean deep, this is probably the deepest I've been in a very long time, but I was all the way in and of course I was saying things out loud to her as she was guiding me through and the only reason why I have knowledge of this is because she told me after what I had said and what I had done. But she took me to this place where she told me to be around the people I know and love the most. So I instant and where I felt most comfortable and for some reason I feel most comfortable in my car with my grandma and that's it. And my grandma passed away about 10 years ago, so she's not alive, but in this hypnotherapy session, I was in my car with my grandma. And my life coach said, okay, now what color do you see? And I saw gold. And she's like, okay, now there's a gold bubble around you. And I was like, okay. And she's like, I want you to look at your grandma and feel that love and hold her and just really feel the love and keep that love in your heart. And I said, okay. And then she told me to, then she asked me what were like my biggest fears and things that were really disturbing me at that time. And she said, now, okay, allow those things to happen, but watch them not be able to enter into your gold bubble and then watch them fly away and disappear. And then after that, she told me that that is how you shield yourself. And that is how you literally send off to the universe and send off to your mind and body that you are shielding yourself from these things and there is a golden bubble around me. So now that I have this knowledge, 
every single time I have some sort of altercation or disagreement with someone and they kind of word vomit on me or whatever, whatever, I go and I do that deep, I do a meditation and I just envision that gold shield and I envision myself protecting myself and watching those words and things disappear. And I can't even tell you guys how magical that experience has been to me and how much shielding myself has truly changed my outlook on myself and how I move on with my days way better than how I did before and how I like literally have taken off my life coach used to call it dirty laundry so basically through generations and generations of families I mean we're just going to be realistic here no family is perfect and a lot of families are far from perfect and there is a lot of emotional physical abuse in homes I'm not going to be naive about that kind of situation because that's a situation I was in my childhood and what happens is when someone is wearing dirty laundry and something that they don't like they're gonna try to hand it off to you and put it on you and then one day before you know it you look down and you're wearing all this dirty laundry that came from all these dirty people and you wore it like it was your own clothes when you should have just taken it off and put it down and lit it on fire but we don't know we don't have the knowledge nor do we know how to do that and thankfully I was taught to do that by this meditation and by shielding myself. So after so many deep meditations and so many envisions of me taking off this dirty laundry and this clothing, I literally now am only wearing my bare skin and myself and I do not wear anyone else's dirty laundry. And shielding yourself really does bring you back to that reality of not wearing other people's dirty laundry. And right now, if you will, or if you want to, I'd ask you to pause and just write down some of the dirty laundry that you may be wearing and really think about it and realize that that's not your clothing. That is someone else's clothing that they try to put on you and take it off, throw it away, burn it, especially through meditation. You guys don't understand how powerful the mind is. Just by you envisioning you doing that, it really does release that tension off of your heart. And number five. This is something that the ego will have the hardest time with because the ego wants to feel bad for itself. The ego sometimes wants to fall victim. The ego sometimes wants to have a pity party. But this is a great thing I have learned and it took me a lot to do this because, you know, I don't want to tell people that I'm weak and I'm innocent and I'm not strong enough, but I really had to embrace the fact that in these situations, I really am not strong enough and I need a support system. And when I am having a bad day, when I feel like I'm agreeing with these agreements again, that I have to go and be around my support system. So don't be afraid to ask your loved ones and people that are near and dear to your heart to just tell you some good things about yourself and remind yourself of who you are and just really exchange that with them like maybe call them and be like I really think this about you and just give off nothing but positive compliments but truly from the heart and I can guarantee you they'll give them to you back or just truly ask someone to remind you of the good qualities in you and that's a little weird but it really does help when you're I'm sorry, my nose is running. It really will help you when you are pretty broken. And I had the hardest time doing this, but once I put my ego down and I, every time I'm having like a really hard time, I'll call my mom and I'll be like, mom, like I'm having a really, really, really hard time right now. Like I just, I need your help. And it really took a lot for me to drop the ego and realize that it does seem kind of needy it does seem a little weird but at the same time it really does help you tremendously and it's okay to say it's okay to know that when you are doing these types of things for yourself like it does take you to a very vulnerable place and you have to be truly honest with yourself and I just had to be humble and realize that like I really do suffer from self-esteem issues and taking things personally and by surrounding myself with people that will remind me with who I am and the best qualities of myself really help quiet down the mind with those other agreements that not so nice people have tried to put in my head. And don't be afraid to ask your loved ones for that and don't be afraid to give it to them back in exchange and just have a loving, constructive conversation that leads you feeling like baggage has coming off your chest 
And just don't be too ashamed to tell someone and to vent to someone about it and to allow them to heal you in a sense. But just make sure that you're giving back to them too as an even exchange. That you don't become just a taker and someone that needs compliments to feel better about themselves. Just have a genuine conversation about it and remind yourself of how other people view you, especially ones that really do see the best in you. <laughs> that is also a very hard one. So those were my five tips of how to stop taking things so personally and how to gain your self-esteem back. I read The Four Agreements when I was 17 years old. I'm now 23. And that is the second lesson that is in that book. And since 17 to 23, I've read quite a few books that have had the exact same message. And it honestly is one of the hardest ones to receive and deal with because you get so caught up in your own mind in everyday life that you really do forget that what people have to say is just a reflection of themselves and has nothing to do with you. And you have to know your space and place as to know when it's constructive criticism to when it's just a straight up bully trying to be mean and bring you down and have another guest in their misery, miserable world. And just know that you are not to blame for it. Whatever someone has to say literally says so much more about them than it ever will say about you. And the higher you rise above that, the more untouchable you become. And now when people say things or when certain things happen, I just, you know, I shrug it off. I, you know, I still take it in a serious matter where I don't ignore it. I really will take it to meditation and cut it off, cut it loose, shut the door to those things. But I also don't allow it to define me as to the person I am. And I wish there was a way I could have recorded my brain three years ago opposed to the brain I have now and the thoughts I have now and just the difference and what these five steps have truly just done for my self-esteem. Because once you do stop taking things so personally, your self-esteem rises because those agreements are shredded up. Those contracts you signed you take them to the shredding machine and you shred them up and you're like, these were never contracts. These were phantom fears of things people put in my head. And you live quite an easier life. <laughs> I really, really, really hope this helps someone out there. I know that some of it could be a little cheesy and something that you might have heard before, but these, these steps really do help. These steps really do go a long way. And I really hope that if you do take things, if I really hope if you do take things personally, that you just take the time to really grow as a human and pick pick up a few books and really do some studying on humans, and you'll really find what I just said to be factual and to be the truth from people that are way older than me, people that have lived way before us. And it's just a human cycle that we got to go through. But once you realize it is just a human cycle that we go through and you now have the tools to step out of the cycle and move on to a better and greater cycle, life just becomes a little bit easier. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. I really, really would love your feedback. And I would really love to hear some of the things that you guys do to keep you guys from not taking things so personal and how you guys raise your self-esteem. Because not only does it help me when I read these comments, it also helps all you other people that are watching this video. And then we have like these actual conversations with one another and it creates some safe zone where we feel like we can just all be together and be one and be happy. <laughs> Cheesy, I know. Um, but thank you again so much for watching. I will see you guys very, very soon. <laughs>